for those of us that run small businesses, um, we're get or done people. We're get up, leave the cave, kill something and drag it home people. So we have traditionally stood back and made fun of, with good reason, some of the stupid butt stuff that goes on in corporate America, and particularly this movement that um, says, um, you know, you have uh, ping pong tables and pool tables and uh, ski ball. I laughingly called it skittle ball one day here on the air, and they've all made fun of me ever since. But, um, uh, you know, just like we have to have a game room inside the company, and we play cornhole inside the company and uh you know we all get free lattes on if you ring a bell or whatever kind of crap i mean it's like it's like you're living in some kind of a zoo or something instead of actually a company and we've all kind of made fun of that um although i do it all now and um uh and the guys on how money works have really taken corporate america to task about this because if you do all of that stuff and you don't create a corporate culture of performance and excellence, and you don't create a corporate culture of accountability, and you don't cr- for behaviors, and you don't, and, and you paper over all this half butt work that's not getting done with a cornhole tournament, then then and you call that corporate culture, then you become a laughing stock, and Google has kind of fallen in fallen into that. So the guys on How Money Works, the YouTube channel, have, uh, say corporate America has become obsessed with company culture, but those Friday afternoon drinks and team building days are papering over a terrible trend, which is making your workplace miserable and stalling your career. Company culture is one of the biggest trends in corporate management. And according to a survey of job seekers and hiring managers conducted by Robert Half, a workforce analytics firm, 91% of managers said that candidates fit with the organizational culture was more important than their skills and experience which I don't disagree with. Hilariously, a PWC survey on company culture found that 69% of companies believe their culture gave them a competitive edge, presumably over the 31% of companies that realize that an office doesn't need a ping pong table and kombucha on tap to be a nice place to work. Managing corporate culture is expensive. Corporate culture managers are earning an average salary package of $110,000 a year, according to Glassdoor uh, Direct Salary. Okay, so there's kind of two points on these guys spectrum one point is uh that this whole idea of company culture is ridiculous and laughable and it's failing in corporate america on the other end of the spectrum is that if we put in a ping pong table and a kombucha and we call that company culture then uh we've taken care of everything neither one of these are correct there's a third point on the diagram. Let's just draw it, draw it as a triangle instead of a spectrum, okay? Let's just go outside the lines and go over and drop a third point. The third point is, is that we get our work done with excellence and diligence. We care deeply about each other, um, and we can have fun at work. We have a massive Battle of the Bands thing here, but we're not awesome at Ramsey because we have a na- massive Battle of the Bands thing. We're awesome at Ramsey and we have a Battle of Bands thing. We're awesome at Ramsey, and we have incredible food in our cafeteria. We're awesome at Ramsey, and we take care of our team members when they're in a lurch, when their house gets flooded or burned or a tornado hits it or someone's mom's got cancer. We take care of people. We love them, and we get our work done. It's not instead of. See, if you do all that stuff and you don't do excellence and you don't take care of people and you don't treat people with dignity and you don't demand accountability for behaviors inside the organization, then you are papering over with fun the lack of the wussification of your team, or not the lack of wussification, the pure wussification of your team, right? And so the guys on how money works are assuming that every time you do that stuff that you're wrong. No, every time you do it to paper it over, to paper over, to, go, to, to camouflage the, all your other screwed up stuff, and you call that company culture, then you're giving company culture a wrong name, uh, a bad name. But company culture is the culture of how your company works. I mean, every company has a culture. Some of them have a toxic culture. Some of them have a great culture. Some of them have a work culture. Some of them have a fun culture. Some of them have a production culture. So what is your culture of your company? That's what we're dealing with. And what you've got to concentrate on out there if you're running a small business is both. But no, you can't have an ice cream party and it make everything okay in a place that's not okay. 
completely agree with that. But let's go back to this other thing. This one caught me here. And these guys are criticizing this, apparently, on this How Money Works, guys, and they're sharp guys. Uh, but I think they missed the point. According to a survey of job seekers and hiring managers conducted by Robert Half, 91% of managers said that a candidate's fit in the organizational culture was more important than their skills and experience. Now, if you're cult by culture fit, you mean someone likes ice cream parties, then, yeah, that's BS. But if your culture fit is we have values, we have 14 core values on the wall here at Ramsey, including share the profits, including we do our work as unto the Lord, including we have a self-employed mentality, including excellence in the ordinary. These are our core values. And if you have wonderful skills and experience, but you don't align to those core values, we don't want you here. Not 91% of the time, 100% of the time, we don't want you here. Because all you're doing is bringing a well-educated, sophisticated crazy into my building. You need to align with those values first and foremost and have skills and have excellence. But yeah, culture alignment to actual real culture, healthy culture, a culture of healthy conflict, cultural alignment to that is more important than your skills and experience. And so, but I think if I'm reading this right, that these guys are saying, no, skills and experience are, are they're, they're, they're the trump card. They're the king of the hill. No, they're not. No, they're not. We all know people that have skills and experience who are too dadgum stupid and dysfunctional to work with. They mess up everything. They are the ultimate fly in the ointment. We all know those people. And so those, that's a time you should not hire them. You should hire a cultural fit and you can help them get the skills and experience if you've got to choose. But my, my contention is you don't have to choose. You can get skills and experience and a cultural fit. But we don't want people that aren't cultural fits at Ramsey. They cause us all kinds of problems, and they're not happy. They don't like it because this is an uncomfortable place to work if you don't fit in intentionally, and that's company culture. So that's what you want to create. This is, a, this is who we are. That's a cultural fit. We think this way. We do things this way. Now you need to ask yourself the question, are you a we? Are you going to be French? We, we. This is us. Are you going to be involved in who we are? Or are you going to stand back and collect a paycheck from a place and say they? No, you're a we. You're just a dysfunctional we because you work there and took their money. So that, that's, that's a, so a hundred percent of managers ought to say co culture trumps experience, culture trumps skills. But what you really want is both skills, experience, and culture fit. But I hope we don't ever let anybody else in this building that's not a culture fit. The rest of the time that we work here, 98% of the problems I've had as a leader have been due to culture fit problems, not skills and experience problems. I very seldom have run into somebody that's a fabulous culture fit and just too dadgum dumb to do the job. This very seldom happens. Of course, part of our culture is we're get them people, so we attract get them people. Get it. Get it. And, you know, you, you don't want to work here if you're not going to do that because we're all getting it. So, you know, that's the thing. So not sure if I got this all exactly in context or not, but that's my take on this whole uh, corporate culture thing. Yes, if, if what the guys at How Money Works are saying is we're papering over dysfunction and lack of performance and horrible human beings by having an ice cream party and calling that company culture and paying some goober $125,000 a year to run the ice cream party, well, that's dumber than a rock. I agree with you. But to say that you want to hire people that aren't cultural fits, that have skills and experience, no. We'll go on the other side of the fence on that one, boys and girls. So I think there's a third point on the diagram. That's my point. And so you're going to have a company culture. It's by default or by creation. So you ought to get with creating it and decide what it is. Hopefully you're not papering over dysfunction, malfunction, junction with ice cream parties. 